thank you very much for inviting me here. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to share my thoughts with you on this occasion. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, something that we are all concerned about as to why we are in a recession. And my view on this is um, the financial crisis is just the symptom and not the disease. Um, I have to add, before I start, I have to point out first a couple of things. Um, you know, a lot of people say that, you know, this whole recession, the financial crisis and the recession all came as a big surprise. All the economists missed it. In fact, if you look at The Economist, uh, one of the latest editions of The Economist, they talk about whether there is any need for a paradigm shift. Uh, or we need to do economy, you know, the way we teach economics has to change or the way we do economic research has to change. In fact, that's an interesting observation. I was in, I think in 2001, in the Asia-Pacific Conference in Bangkok. And Franklin gave a very interesting speech at the time. He predicted that, uh, you know, if you don't do something we may well end up, U.S. may well end up to be like what Japan was experiencing because of the crash of the real estate bubble. So he actually predicted that we may well be in a very deep recession uh, sometime in a few years. And there's another person who actually predicted the uh, financial crisis, uh, that's Raghu Rajan, in the uh, 2005 Jackson Hole Conference uh, which was in, you know, it's a send-off party for Greenspan. So the interesting thing on the two is that both of them have very deep connection to ISB and also to India. Franklin is right here, and Raghu, um, you know him. He's also a person of Indian origin, deep, closely connected with uh, ISB. So in some sense, what I'm going to say should not come as a surprise to Franklin or others, uh, but maybe a surprise to a few other people. So first, uh, we call this a Great Recession, not a Great Depression. Um, if you look at corporate equities, it was about close to $20 trillion in 1999, which is about, two point, uh, about twice of GDP of the U.S. In 2008, it's about $15 trillion, or 1.1 1 .1 of GDP. So in terms of, if you look at it as a multiple of GDP, it has come down by 50%. It's a big drop in a matter of 10 years. If you look at peak unemployment, in fact, people are quite relatively poor as a multiple of GDP net worth of U.S. households has come down from 4.4 to 3.6. And the peak unemployment was only 4.4% in 99, And today, it's almost entering double digit. So clearly, the economy U.S. economy is doing badly, and it's also reflecting what's happening in the rest of the world. So the question is, why are we in a recession? Uh, the folk wisdom is that if you ask why are we in a recession, it's because of the financial crisis. So what caused the financial crisis? Well, it's because of easy credit availability and lax regulation and oversight. And what, what caused all that? Lax regulation and easy credit and all that, it's because of savings flat. There's just too much money save, chasing too few opportunities, and that creates perverse incentives. And then what costs the savings glut? There's just too much saving in Asia and too little in America, and all the, flow, all the savings in Asia is flowing into the U.S. And then why is there too much saving in Asia? The answer is the Asians just like to save. Um, and so how do you get out of the recession? tell the Asians to save a little bit less and spend more, and Americans to save a little more. The question is, is that all that is needed? So what is wrong with this logic? It is misleading to think that the causality flows from E to D to C to B and A, that is from too much saving in Asia to, you know, too much uh, money in U.S. and financial crisis and the global recession. All these phenomena are closely interrelated, and I think there is a deeper driving force. And what is this deep, deeper driving force? 
some big change has taken place in the world and somehow we are not yet fully able to adjust to this big change or big shock. And I'm going to argue that these two big changes are the geopolitical in nature and also technological in nature. Two major events that took place in the last few decades is one is the opening of China. That happened in 1978 with the recognition of China and it took them a decade or so to get set up and then to start taking off in a big way. And the opening of India which took place much later. And the technological innovations in essentially in the communications and the transportation sector in the 90s. So if you look at it, and also all the unions are gone. So there's a huge amount of globalization. It's a truly a global economy now. In fact, a uh, snowblower manufacturer in Wisconsin can actually shut down the plant and move it all, all the manufacturing operation to China, and nobody will know any difference. In fact, just-in-time operation can still be there, and the customers will not notice any difference at all. And workers in India can compete with workers in U.S. without actually physically moving. In fact, if you think about a radiologist sitting in Hyderabad, they can look at the x-rays of a patient in Boston and advise as to what is wrong in the x-ray. So the basic point is that the workers in the developing world now can participate in the developed world's labor market without physically moving. And therefore, there's been a huge increase in the world's labor supply in a very, very short period of time. If you actually want to think about when did such a, if you think of labor as a huge, immense asset, in terms of comparison, the only thing I can think of of such a major shock in the world, um, in terms of inputs, is when America was discovered. I think it tripled or quadrupled the amount of land available to the Western world. And I think the kind of shock that we are experiencing is of similar magnitude, but in potential increase in human capital or labor supply. So I'm going to argue that the inability of the existing financial and legal institutions to cope with this change is the reason for this recession. There's a large increase in employment in the developing world, and their inability to absorb the savings through increased domestic investment in productive activities. And the money essentially is being going into U.S. and other developed countries, primarily the U.S. And there are currency controls, but they are motivated by other objectives. Inability of the U.S. economy to adjust to these perverse incentives caused by a lot of money flowing into the system. And the institutional checks and balances, all that were set in place, they assumed they were all based on certain assumptions, though that those assumptions don't hold anymore. And this set the stage for the recession, because we have to, when a lot of changes take place, you have to readjust. And the readjustment process is what causes a recession, according to real business cycle theory. And we can, in this case, identify what this huge shock is. And the financial crisis is the first, or was the first, symptom. 